Steve, take, take us back to the first three minutes of the Big Bang, the first second, the first 10 to the minus 30 second second. Uh, I have to think about that. <laughs> the uh, We can turn back the clock in our minds by using the laws of nature as we know them. Um, and we can run the clock back to a time when the universe was uh, three minutes old. That's a time when uh, it was f for the first time beginning to be cool enough so that elementary particles were the protons and neutrons were able to stick together and form complex atomic nuclei. First the nucleus of heavy hydrogen deuterium and then rapidly in a series of nuclear reactions as the universe cooled forming helium and a little bit of lithium and uh, the the ingredients with which later many hundreds of thousands or millions of years later the stars would begin to form. Uh, you can turn the clock back earlier still to a time when uh, the particles that we're familiar with, uh, the particles, the protons and neutrons which make up ordinary nuclei and the electrons which form the outer parts of atoms were not the only par particles present. It was hot enough so that particles like uh, uh, muons and tauons and other particles uh, that today only exist in cosmic rays and elementary particle laboratories were present in abundance, which is just as great as the abundance of electrons. And um, they were created out of heat and kept being created and annihilating again. In fact, their numbers were dictated by a balance between creation and annihilation rather mm -hmm. than being mm -hmm. set by some preordained menu. Uh, you turn the clock, and we can turn the clock back further, you get to a time when uh, among the particles present were quarks, the particles that make up protons and neutrons. And in recent decades, our theories of the strong forces between quarks are good enough so that we can actually calculate what they were doing, uh, uh, how they interacted with each other, the, the way in which the universe cooled, which is affected by the amount of energy distributed among quarks of different speeds. You turn the clock back further still, you begin to get to an era where there are particles that we haven't yet discussed, which we only speculate about, but which may be produced in the next generation of elementary mm -hmm. particle accelerators, in particular the big one that's going into operation in 2007 in Europe, the Large Hadron Collider. And we can't say what happened then, uh, but we can work out various plausible scenarios according to various theories about these particles that haven't yet been produced in our laboratories, but where we have pretty good theories to describe them. Go back much earlier, and the uncertainty increases because eventually you get to a time when the force of gravity was so strong that it became as strong as the other forces. Now, that, that may be a little surprising because we think of gravity on Earth as a pretty strong force. I mean, you know, we have to, you, you don't jump off tall buildings without worrying about the consequences. Is gravity pulls you down. But uh, that's because... Uh, the whole every, Earth is beneath exactly, you. Exactly. <laughs> every particle in the Earth is pulling you. Gravity on the scale of atoms is an incredibly weak force so much so that no one has ever detected or probably has any hope of detecting the effects of gravity acting between the particles in an atom. The ratio between the electromagnetic force and gravity is 1 to 10 to the 39th? 39th. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastically small. Right. But gravity is produced not just by mass, but by mass and energy. And as you go back earlier, the particles are hotter, they have more energy, gravity becomes stronger. Eventually you get to a time when the force of gravity is as strong as in the other mm. forces. And then to understand what's happening, you need a theory which is uh, in, describes gravity 
in, in the same quantum mechanical language we use for the other force, and we don't have that at all. And approximately what, what fraction of a second is that? Oh, my, I don't even think in those terms, yeah. but I would say something, you know, uh, I hope I'm not wrong about this, but something like 10 to the minus 43rd seconds after a, a mathematical beginning. That's If I've got that right, it's a 1 with 42 zeros and, and, okay. and then a 1. <laughs> What what do you think about this? When you think about these issues, getting back to three minutes, which you're fairly confident about, yeah. when you get back to the ten to the minus forty third second, you know you're a little little shaky. I'm but, very shaky, <laughs> but not bad. But not bad considering the time yeah. frame. But here, as human beings, we've had a few thousand years of sentient history, recorded history, and what five hundred years of scientific history, no. and yet we're able to go back to that time and in three. To the first three minutes, you are quite confident. And even to such a minuscule part of the first second of existence, you even have some decent ideas. Uh, when you have some night thoughts about that relationship, what do you, what do you think about? Uh, what I mostly think about is whether it will continue, uh, whether or not, uh, well, first of all, of course, whether the human species uh, taking it advantage of the wonderful opportunities provided will sci by science will succeed in destroying itself and make all these questions moot. <laughs> uh, and if that isn't, doesn't happen, whether or not society will continue to provide the funds uh, necessary uh, for this kind of research, uh, because it does get more and more expensive. You know, you can't uh, study the particles directly without as far as we know, building very large accelerators, you can't study the very faint radio static that comes into us from the time when the universe was a few hundred thousand years old without getting above the Earth. Well, we can study it on the ground, but we, we need also the observations sure. above the Earth's atmosphere. And that, that gets very expensive. Uh, we waste enormous amounts of money on manned space flight, which have has no uh, scientific function. Um, uh, I worry about that. And maybe a more important worry is whether or not uh, the forces of uh, religious zealotry, uh, which are uh, so obvious in the Islamic world, but not entirely absent in the West, uh, will lead to us turning away from science. Because after all, the scientific revolution, uh, of course, did occur in the uh, 16th century and 17th century. But uh, there had been a great period of scientific advance before that in Hellenistic times, which then came to an end. Uh, it was continued for a while in the Arab world, it disappeared in the Christian world. And then after the 13th century, it really uh, did not pick up again in any real way until the time of Galileo. Uh, we may not continue with the great, um, great tradition of science uh, for reasons which are even deeper and more frightening than the lack of funding. 